team of scientists have accidentally stumbled across a baryonic acoustic oscillation. Essentially, it's a fossilized imprint of the early universe before any structures even existed. Just like fossils can tell us about the history of life on Earth, baryonic acoustic oscillations, or BAO for short, can tell us about the history of the universe and the conditions and processes occurring at early times. Traditionally, for a statistically significant BAO signal, you need to measure the separations between tens of thousands or even many millions of galaxies. But now it seems perhaps the first individual BAO structure has been detected. And it comes from the team who also discovered that our galaxy, the Milky Way, belongs to a supercluster of galaxies, the Lanier Kea Supercluster. So what exactly have they measured? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video, I'll be talking about Ho Lei Lana, the first ever detection of an individual baryonic acoustic oscillation. I've spoken about baryonic acoustic oscillations before, but the idea is that in the early universe, when things were a hot primordial plasma of photons and baryons, so things like protons and neutrons, following the Big Bang, intense radiation pressures instigated fluctuations in matter density, and this led to areas of marginally higher and lower concentrations. The photons and baryons were like two particles connected by a string. The photon strives to break free from the gravitational pull and escape the potential well, whereas matter pulls it back down due to gravity. When the universe reached the recombination epoch, it had cooled sufficiently for photons to detach from matter. These photons then journeyed unobstructed through space. While matter evolved under gravitational forces, Drawing from the spring analogy, releasing one end would cause the other to recoil, sending a ripple-like signature throughout space often described as a pressure wave. It also sets a characteristic scale of how far the photon matter could travel before the decoupling happens, and as a result, left an imprint on the distribution of matter in the universe. This imprint is called the Baryonic Acoustic Oscillation, BAO, and this signature is where you'll find regions of slightly higher density will have an excess of matter, while regions of lower density have a deficit. And then as aeons passed, gravitational forces will compel matter to coalesce within these zones, giving rise to dense cosmic structures like galaxies and galaxy clusters. From an observational point of view, this implies a predominant separation distance between galaxies. And by calculating this separation between all of the galaxies, we'll be able to see this excess of galaxies being separated by this characteristic scale. So by studying the statistical analyses of the clustering pattern in galaxies, scientists can extract information about the curvature of space, the expansion rate of the universe, and the enigmatic dark energy, all important components to cosmology. Now, typically to detect the BAO feature, you need to measure a big survey of clustering of galaxies over a wide redshift range. Remember, a higher redshift means a galaxy is farther away. And this is because the characteristic scale of the BAO signal, i.e. its location, increases with redshift. But it's not that the scale itself is changing, rather that we need to account for the expansion of the universe. The more galaxies you have, the better precision we can get on the BAO scale. The Dark Energy Survey, DES, will observe over 300 million galaxies out to a redshift of 1.4. That means 9.0 billion light years away. Now, the universe on very large scales looks roughly the same everywhere. This uniformity is called homogeneity. Studies have found that when you look at chunks of the universe, 
that are about 70 to 120 times a certain size factor across, these chunks have roughly the same amount of stuff like galaxies and dark matter with only a 1% difference between them. But the BAO shells of overdense galaxies are on scales larger than these homogeneous chunks. So you'd expect that any differences in the amount of stuff, the essentially density fluctuations within these shells should be very small. In other words, it should be really hard to see an individual BAO shell. In 2012, there was an idea that BAOs might have originated from specific dense regions in the early universe that today appear as rich clusters of galaxies. And so what they did was they stacked data centered on around 800 galaxy clusters, and surely enough, they were able to find a faint BAO signal. Now in this new study that I'll link down below, the authors claim to have found a single BAO, and possibly one of the largest structures in the nearby universe. It's not the first time this structure has been found. In fact, in INASTO 2016, this structure and many other shell-like structures have been identified, but they failed to link them to BAO signatures. And also it's important to note that BAO structures are not rings, but instead spherical shells. But just looking at the data, you almost can make out a ring in any case, they arbitrarily define some center of where this ring sits, marked by the red cross here. It just happens to be close to some famous Abel galaxy clusters. These are marked by blue crosses. There's about 34,000 galaxies here, so nowhere near the number in the DESI survey. But when you plot the distance between each of those galaxies and the arbitrary center, you get this bump. A bump showing that there are more galaxies at this distance than anywhere else. A BAO signature. Now I know you might be thinking that this must be down to chance. I mean, just randomly deciding some center? But no, they generated countless random simulations and weren't able to reproduce this bump. The detection is a solid six sigma detection, so the probability of this happening by chance is like one in half a billion. Like I said before, the location of the BAO signal is sensitive to the cosmological parameters, the numbers that describe the universe that we live in. So it's pretty cool that they even managed to constrain the Hubble constant, H0, a measure of how fast the universe is expanding. Whilst the uncertainties on the value is still large, this is what is being done with just one BAO signature. Imagine what we could do with even more. The result is still in agreement with existing measurements, so it doesn't really help to solve the cosmic conundrum, that is the disagreement of H0 measured with different probes, but again, it's still early days. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. As always, thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting. Please consider joining if you haven't already. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.